Now video is to go over the gear cut and gear blip control when using a sequential gearbox. This is not a help video that is based on the paddle shift control when using a full paddle shift strategy. This is purely for guys that are using a sequential gearbox or even just a H pattern gearbox with the ability to want to do a flat shift or a cut. On the sequential gearbox you need to do a cut or a blip to change the transient torque on the uh, gear drive in order to release the dogs entwined inside the gearbox. So the first thing we need to do is set up a gear cut request input. Now this input can be a 0 to 5 volt input, a bipolar, a unipolar, can't be for mister. Okay? It has to be one that is can be programmed from 0 to 5 volts. Now the reason for that is a lot of the sensors that you buy on the market, like for example the ones that KA sensors sell, which you can see on their website here showing you, they're actually based on a, a, a medium value in the center of 5 volts. So basically you provide it with a 5 volt signal and the sensor will then sit at say 2.5 volts as its rest position. Then when the force is applied in a forward motion to the load cell, the voltage then goes up in a linear, in a linear fashion based on the force you're applying to it. And if it's going down, in the same manner. And we can actually see this when looking at the data log here applied. The gear cut input V, as you can see, is sat at 2.5 volts. And then when the, the stick is pulled back, we can see that the, the, it's been pulled back and the gear cut input voltage drops. Now, depending on which way round the load cell sensor is fitted, that could be changed to go up or down. So, let's get that assigned. So, you've wired in your KA sensor, or you've wired in a, for a H pattern box, uh, just a clutch switch sensor in there. Okay? What you then need to do is go down to IO configuration, pin assignments, and scroll down to gear cut. And you can see here, you've got gear shift manual blip request and gear shift manual cut request. Now you can see that these actually have been assigned to the same pin. The reason for this is because you can use both of these inputs for the same uh, task. Um, and not many, of the not many of the inputs allow this, but the gear shift manual blip request and cut does allow this. And you'll see why in a minute when we go over the actual strategy. So first of all, if you're just wanting to do a flat shift and say you've got a clutch switch, then you only need to wire in the sensor onto the manual cut request. And if you were just using the clutch pedal and you had it, say, just going from 0 up to 5 volts when you press the clutch down, it sends a 5 signal, or if it sits at 5 volts and then goes to ground, we need to basically tell the EC what that's doing. So for the, this, for the purpose of this video, let's go over it and say that we've actually got a load cell sensor fitted in there. So you've assigned your input. You need to obviously program the ECU then for the changes to be saved onto the ECU by going to device at the top and then program. Now we're offline here so we can't actually do that but once you've done that the ECU will reset and the changes will then be saved inside the ECU. Then we need to go to gear shift. Now the gear shift mode here you can say what you, mode you want it to actually be. If you're using a paddle shift then you would use the auto mode but because we're just doing a manual uh, stick we're going to do it on the manual mode. So we select the manual option. Now all of the other options below here, we don't need to worry about because a lot of these are actually for the paddle shift strategy. But the ones that are important to us are the manual shift inputs. <clears throat> so if you're using just say the clutch switch, going back to that, if you have it so it goes from naught and then when you press the clutch down it goes to five volts, then you can purely just set your cut input polarity to be active high. And you can use the ability to have a pull up if you wanted to have the voltage sit at 5 if you were having it so it pulled to ground, at which point you would change it to polarity low. Now the polarities do still uh, get taken into account when you're doing your voltage thresholds. So as you saw in the data log, we can actually see our gear cut voltage is going down when we're requesting an upshift. So that's one as a cut. So our polarity does need to be active low. Then you've got your voltage threshold. Now here you can see that we've got in here 1.9. Now what that means is that say the sensor sits at 2.5 volts. When you then pull the, the stick back, when it goes past the threshold of 1.95 volts, what then happens is the gear cut request, which you can see over here, will become active. You can click on it just over here. You'll then see that would come active if you're online. And you want to watch that live when you're online to make sure that is going to yes and going back to no or off when it's not being pulled. 
and we can actually see this here that the gear cut request is coming on and going to yes when it passes 1.9 5 volts okay it turns on and you get your gear cut request that then initiates the gear cut strategy and you've got your voltage hysteresis your validation time so you can validate that the voltage has been below that amount the debounce time so if the signal were to jump around and you've got then stability detection so the point in which the voltage has to be stable for based on your debounce time now here you've got your nominal rest rest voltage so obviously that was the uh, the sensor was sitting at 2.5 so we've set that now if you're using it to do a blip as well by pushing it forward we then need to change the polarity the other way so it's an active high and then you'll see the voltage threshold has to go the other way so it's going to then 2.9 now it's not set in the first gear because I don't want it to blip when going into neutral and once you've set that now if you are using a H pattern box and you want it to basically cut on an upshift and uh, sorry in a forward motion and a backward motion so on a H pattern box so as you're going from first to second you're pulling down but then when you're going from second to third you're pushing forward if you aren't wanting to do that and you have got a load cell sensor like the KA one you can still make it cut in both directions and what you do is you use the load selected cut or blip enable now there is more notes on it if you press F1 to explain a bit more about it but in a nutshell what you can do is actually say that if you enable this and your PPS or TPS depending on which threshold you select is greater than say 25% what you can then say that if you are if the gear cut comes on and you are or the gear blip or gear cut depending on which one you've got the threshold set on if you were to have say a cut or a blip it would always then do a cut okay now like I said you can see this bit more if you press F1 it does explain it better which is why I'm not going to go over into it too much more because the purpose is really for sequential boxes so we've got our manual shift set up and if you were to do pushing it forward now you should see the gear cut request go to yes and if you're then pulling it back or the vice versa you will see the gear blip request go to yes and you can see that over here if you click on the item down over here again so then what we need to do is then set up the gear cut and the gear blip side of the strategies so the first thing we then presented with is cut mode now if you have got a sequential box and you've got the actual gear position sensor inside the sequential box then you always want to use the closed loop the reason for this is because you can then monitor the gear voltage and allow the cut to end as soon as the actual uh, the gear is dropped in this is a much better way of getting the shifts quicker and more reliable if you're using a gearbox that doesn't have the gear position sensor then you use the open loop okay and you can then set a time in which you want to cut to be active for this goes again for if you're using say a, like a, a flat shift on a H pattern box and you want it to cut you when the clutch pressure or the clutch pedal is pressed down and you've assigned it to a, a gear cut request what you would then do is set this actually as open loop set your cut enable for which gears you want it to be in and then set your enable engine speed and, and throttle position in which it has to be greater than and then after that what you can then do is go to open loop main cut and you could set this at then say really the highest value a thousand uh, or ten thousand okay so basically what that means is whenever the clutch pressure is the clutch pedal is pressed down the cut uh, time will be set for ten thousand obviously that's an extremely long time so what you've got then if you have got the clutch position sensor you could then have it set at end of request end cut so when the clutch pedal comes back up it then stops the cut so let's get back to the sequential so what you've got you've got your cut mode then set back to closed loop okay your mass time basically is so that if you were to have one cut it would have to wait more than 20 milliseconds before another cut can be applied if you would pull the lever back cut enable really simple what gears you want to allow it to do a cut uh, on a down change or an up change clutch switch disable cl uh, cut say if you wanted to have it so that when you're driving around at low speeds you've got a clutch switch sensor wired in and you don't want it to cut because you're going to use the clutch to change the transient torque then you just set that to yes and you can wire in a clutch switch into the pin assignments and have it then so that that basically stops the cut the cut engine able speed is when it's greater than 1700 rpm and the throttle is more than 5% the cut will be applied 
You can then have a cut request output polarity. So if you wanted to have a light on the dash or something like that to show that a cut is active, you can change the polarity of the output and you'll find that in pin assignments. You've got the option to turn off the secondary injectors during a cut and the dog preparation time. Now, the first section of the, the shift, the gear cut, is actually the ramp out. Now, the ramp out is there just to allow a softer cut normally on sequential boxes. So you can set a ramp out time, this cut severity amount, the ignition cut severity, and ignition retard amount. Now, I haven't used it in this particular instance because I'm wanting the cut to be as quick as possible. Um, because when you pull the gear lever back on a gear stick with car or scruncher box, you're already preloading the dogs in order to engage when you actually have to cut. So basically, I'm not using the ramp out. I'm straight away going into the closed loop main cut. So you've got a minimum cut time and then a maximum cut time. So basically, this is the, the minimum maximum the cut can be. And I'll explain how it, the, the duration of that, what, what affects that in a moment. You've then got your fuel cut severity. Now this car um, did actually have a catalytic converter still present, so I did a small fuel cut to take the temperatures down inside the, uh, the exhaust manifold. And the rest of it then was done by ignition cut and ignition retard. Now the ignition cut in first gear needs to be a lot more because of the uh, change in RPM was a quite a drastic delta change. So I need to cut the torque big time in order for the uh, dog to release nicely. You can then do a fuel multiplier, or ignition retard amount as you went over. You can set a maximum ignition angle. You can change your drive by wire. Uh, you can close the throttle if you wanted to. Then you've got the base closed loop cut live barrel start position. And what that means is if we go back to the data log, so you'll see this gear, gear voltage. And when you are setting up your sequential gearbox, be it a paddle shift or with just a, a gear uh, like load cell, you need to be able to logging the gear voltage really fast because it's a great way of seeing what's actually going on inside the box. So you can see in this particular instance that the customer is pulling the lever back and you can see the gear voltage starts to go up where the gear is actually starting to be pressed against the opposite gear in the dog. And then actually when you have the cut then applied, so you can see here the, the, the closed lip main cut is applied, and if we were to put on here TRQ, say ignition cut or ignition retard, where is it? Ignition, ignition retard, you can see here that it's pulled out, say 55 degrees of uh, timing, and that's caused the transient, like the, the, the torque inside the engine to change massively. And at which point the dogs then become unloaded and it drops into the next gear nicely, as you can see with the gear voltage. This is particularly nice, this whole um, thing, we can put a, a click here, press space bar, and then click how long it takes to get into the next gear. And that's a nice fast shift of 67 uh, milliseconds, as you can see up here in the delta time, the difference between the two. So it's good to monitor that, see what kind of shift speed you are actually getting. Now, the, the actual gear cut min and maximum time, coming back to that now, this base closed loop cut on live barrel start position, what that does, when the cut is, the gear cut request comes in, what that actually does now is the ECU will take the voltage in which, which you've got on the gear cut V, I mean, sorry, the gear V. So for example, you've got 2.2 volts there. So when you've actually pulled it back, you've got your gear cut request, it takes that voltage reading of 2.2. So you can choose to have it based on before the actual gear cut request, or just it's coming on. So you can see what the barrel, where the barrel is moved to. Then you've got your delta proportion for cut complete. Now what this is, is this, this is a percentage change between what your start barrel position was on the gear V and where it's ended up. And when the difference between those is uh, more than 75%, what you can then do is you can then say, okay, the cut is completed successfully. And at which point the gear cut then, uh, the main cut ends. So we can see here where it comes in at 2.2 volts. When, if we zoom right in on here, when it actually goes uh, past, I think it was 2.75, um, we can say that it's successfully in the next gear based on a 75% uh, change. And then it's the cut ends and it comes into the ramp in stage. Now the dog to dog kick time, if basically the the actual between 
the minimum and maximum cut time, you haven't actually had the actual next gear drop in. Say if it, it, it uh, for the maximum time of 250 milliseconds where I've got on here, it hasn't actually gone into the next gear. What you can do is a dog to dog kick. Now what that does is it basically applies a full torque reduction on the fuel cut. Okay, and these are, these settings are set here in the retry. And then what it does is it immediately, so it does a full cut, stops, and then does an immediate another cut to try and shock it out um, to change if there are particularly tight dogs or the dogs are worn. Um, these, this is important for cars that are in the race series and that they've got to complete the race. But generally, you shouldn't be seeing the dog to dog kick happening if you've got a box that's in perfectly good condition and the cut amounts are set up correctly. So you've got the option to kick disable other torque reductions, and then you've got your retry amount cut times, fuel cut. You can see I've set it to 100% cut on the fuel cut, ignition cut, to basically get it out of that, that dog released. So, and what we've also got, just going this a bit more, you've got the failure count. So if you've had one dog to dog cut, it starts a counter, and basically you can set then if the, the failure count was to go more than five times, you can actually disable the closed loop and it will then use the open loop settings based on the cut time you've got in there. Okay. The ramp pin then is the end of the cut sequence. So I've got this is basically just purely to smooth out the RPM on the change. So if you look carefully at some at particular sequential gearboxes on a shift, you'll see the RPM trace will jump up and down a bit. You have a bit of ringing on the uh, the actual the engine and the RPM from the, the actual prop shaft and stuff like that with the shock changes because it's some, some of the gearboxes are quite harsh on change. What the ramp in does is it allows you to apply like a soft torque reduction. So I've got it here for 80 milliseconds after the actual shift is complete. Just to basically just 12 degrees of ignition retard just to take some torque out of the engine to basically smooth out that RPM which works really nicely here. So Let's go to the gear blip. So we've got it so we can go up the box. Now we're coming down the box. The blip mass time is the same as we explained in cut. It's the amount of time between the two consecutive requests. Then I've got my blip time. This is the amount of time which the blip will be active for. Now they're quite large numbers and I've actually got it so the end of the request ends blip. So basically when the barrel is back to the neutral position um, of 2.5 and it's happy, it stops the blip. You can do it in a closed loop mode if you wanted to. Um, if you had it so that you've got the gear position sensor so when it's gone into the gear. Um, I didn't actually do it in this instance because I like to have the RPM up for a little bit, the, request, the blip request for a little bit longer after the gear has gone in just to basically smooth out and make sure that RPM is held and not being dragged up. Um, so you can actually see if you were to do it based on gear position, you can actually see it goes into the gear a lot quicker and the blip is then off. I've actually done it when the gear cut request goes back to the nominal uh, point there. And if you look at the TPS, um, sorry, this is an up change, not a blip. We'll go over that in a minute and look at it a bit more. But you can actually see that the gear cut voltage, um, I've got it set so that basically once the lever is not being pressed, then the gear blip ends. And it basically just helps the rev match, I, I find, on this particular install. Now you've got the engine speed prediction ends blip and the enable rev limit and rev cut options. Now there is a parameter which I'm not sure if it's logged on this particular uh, package, no it's not. But what you've got is you've got, you can open a gauge for it, a gauge add post RPM post downshift and RPM post upshifts. So what this for is for basically the, the ECU knows what gear it's in and it knows what RPM you're at. So we can work out based on the, the drive ratio what the perfect RPM will have to be in order to rev match nicely. Now, if you've got, say, a car which is not sequential box um, and you've got, say, a H-pattern box where you wanted to apply a blip, what you can actually do here is basically the, uh, enable the rev limit or rev cut option to basically hold at the post RPM downshift amount. So, for example, you press the clutch, at that point the gear blip request then comes on. As you pull the lever back to go into the lower gear, what that then does is it causes the blip to come on. Now the blip will be on for a lot longer than it would be for a sequential box, so you can have your blip time quite high. 
And what it would do then is it would, it would bring the revs up and hold it at that perfect RPM post downshift amount. So that when you then put the clutch back in, you've got a really nice rev match. And this is the same that's applied to our DSG packages like the R35, um, the new 991 kits. Any of the cars that are using a dual clutch, we use this to get perfect rev matching on a down change. The rev cut and rev limit to hold time after shift complete, you can basically have it so it holds on for 300 milliseconds after the shift is completed. Uh, the recalculate rev limit, uh, rev cut as vehicle speed changes is, is, is what it says on the tin. As you're down changing, if your vehicle speed is coming down rapidly, then the post RPM will change with that, with the ratio calculation. Okay, so blip, blip actuator type sets whether it's a direct on off or progressive. The direct off on on off is just generally when you've got like a blip actuator, a little actuator which pushes on the throttle body and you want it just to be on or off. The progressive blip is based on when you're using uh, like a, a drive by wire motor, which is set on here. You can then set your target for the throttle opening based on RPM and gear. Roll on rate, this is basically the rate in which the TPS is opened over uh, every 10 milliseconds or every millisecond. It's a 30% chain. So if you want the, the TPS to ramp in slowly on the change to like roll on like a, a professional driver might do uh, with a pedal when down changing or before drive by wire, you can then simulate that by having it a roll on rate. The pre-blip opening time is not used in any of the strategies, that's not actually used anymore, um, so you don't need to worry about that. So hopefully we've gone over enough information in here to help you get your sequential gearbox car with the stick or flat shift in a H-pattern box set up and working. What we'll do next is we'll go over the paddle shift control and this has been a separate video.